Hello there. This video is going to talk about Garmin routing. This video will also cover a little bit about TomTom, but though I don't have a TomTom and uh, it's really just about converting from Garmin to TomTom, but some of this video might be relevant to TomTom as well. I'll talk about routing, to what it is, which Garmin units support it, um, what GPX files are and how to put them onto your device and how to drive the routes that people might send you or that you might get off the internet. And then more advanced stuff like how to prepare those routes in the first place using the device itself, the Garmin device itself, or uh, using various bits of software. Most of the stuff I'm talking about is all to do with either free software that you can freely download from the internet and it's free to use, or else uh, the Garmin unit itself, which obviously you have already. There is another piece of software called Garmin Map Source, which is not free, um, but you may have that. I'll talk about that a little bit. Finally then, I'll also talk about how to convert routes from the Garmin format GPX to the TomTom format ITN. Alright, so what is routing? I'll just use Google Maps because it's easier to show you and it's quicker. I'm typing in basically Southampton to Swindon. And what it does, it calculates calculates the quickest route from Southampton to Swinton in terms of time. You can, and this is what your, your Garmin device would do as well, so that's not routing, that's just from A to B. What you can do is just grab the blue line and drag it. So that I put, now it's not going to use the A34 and M4 because I find that particular route to be quite tedious, but it's going to use much more interesting back roads and we can see that it's taken, it's going to take an hour and 51 minutes, whereas before it would have just taken an hour and 23 according to Google, but you can never tell with traffic conditions and that. So so we've done that by dragging the, the line until we and to form what's called a via point. So now we go from A to B via C in this case. The units that support routing, not all Garmin devices support routing. This is, this is a Garmin 710, which is an older unit. There are some newer ones out. The 700 series definitely supports it. The 800 series supports it. I'm not sure which of the newer ones support it. But it tends to be, or it tended to be in the past anyway, that the premium models supported it. The more basic, sort of cheaper models that you could buy didn't have as many of the functions as the more premium ones, and routing was certainly one of them. You'll be able to tell if your unit does support um, routing, because when you turn it on and it boots up, you find that you come to this screen here. On my, I've just changed it to nighttime mode, so that's why the colours look like that, and yours it might be white. You'll find that if you go to where to, you have roots on the second page of the where to or else if you go tools you have roots on the first page if you don't have that chances are your device doesn't have the functionality that's required another question you might have and the Garmin don't make very clear is how many roots you can have on the device simultaneously in other words stored on the device ready to kind of use as you're out and about driving and the answer is you can have 10 roots on the device which are actively ready to use at any one time but you can actually have far more than that ready to go pretty much ready to go um, when you're out and about so the, the answer is actually you can have an, unli an unlimited number of routes stored on a device ready to use when you're driving around because basically what you do is you import them and that brings us nicely onto our next topic which is how do I get a GPX file that I might have been sent or got off the internet how do I get that onto my device onto my Garmin device so I'll show you that the easiest way, or the most straightforward way really, is to copy the GPX file directly from your computer to a certain place on the device, because the device is connected via USB, and once you plug in the device, it gets mapped into Windows as a drive letter, and you can just copy or remove files or transfer files on to, to and from it in the normal way like you would with any other drive in Windows. There are other programs you can use, and there's I've got three of them here. There are, there are uh, programs you can use which will do that kind of automatically for you, but it's it's not that difficult to do yourself. So I'll show you the the, the straightforward method first. Here, right, let's just open it in Windows Explorer actually. In Windows, what you want to do is basically make sure that you can see the file extensions. So. Because it, if you've downloaded it from the internet, it's possible that you'll have missed off the extension. But it doesn't matter. These files are just XML files. They're just text files, really. In fact, you can open them using just Notepad or something like that to see what's in them if you wanted to. They're just 
XML files. So we can we can call it whatever we like as long as it ends in GPX. So in this in this case, it's only an example that the file is called GPX file or GPX. What we need to do then is get our Garmin and use a USB cable that one that fits the I think one comes with it actually. You just plug it in and let it go through its boot up sequence. Now it'll take a bit it'll take a bit longer than normal because basically what it does is it boots up first and then it also goes through the um initialization routine to connect to connect to the uh PC. So you can see it this is the screen that you see when it's connecting to the PC and you have to wait for this process bar to get to the end. Okay, so now that the progress bar is gone, we're ready to we know that we're that it's connected to the PC. So what we do is we get our file that we want and we just copy it, for example by right click and copy. Then we can open up Windows Explorer again by pressing Windows key E for example, that's one way. Windows key is this little this little key here with the flag on it and we press Windows key E and we open up that. And what we'll see, I don't know if you can see very well on the screen here, but what we get is a drive letter. In this case it's I and it's it's called Garmin Navi. Once we access that drive, we have there's a directory called Garmin and there's a directory called GPX. So you're looking for your Garmin drive, Garmin GPX. And in there you'll find lot you may find already some GPX files. You can leave them there or you can get rid of them if you want to. You'll realise what they're for in a little while. There's one called there's always one called current GPX and position.gpx, but there's you can delete them if you want. Garmin recreates them when it reboots, it doesn't really matter. We might as well leave them alone. You then copy your file, in our case, GPX file or GPX in there. Once that is done, Windows would actually like you to stop the hardware, in other words, to safely remove the, the Garmin device. However, it, it I can't find a way to do that in Vista. It it it, it, it continually complains that it's in use. So as, as long as you're happy that the, the, the file has been transferred and Windows is no longer accessing this, the Garmin device, you can just plug it out mm -hmm. and it'll automatically kind of dismount it. Then what you do is you let the, the Garmin boot up. So once it's booted up you come to the main screen which is this Where To or View Map or Tools. If we go to Where To and go to Roots, if this is if this is your first time using the root and functionality like this or well, that's what I'm trying to say is that there won't be any roots in there yet because although you've transferred the file to the, the, the Navi device you have an import roots. I'm just showing you that don't panic, they're not there yet but all we do is we go back and we go to tools from the main screen and we say my data and you say import root from file what this will do at this stage is search itself for all the roots in any files that are on it and we called the file, the root that we wanted is actually called Southampton to Swindon using the back roads. Now, the person who designed the routes will give the individual routes names, and the name of the GPX file itself is different from the names of the routes that it contains, because a GPX file can contain more than one route, and that's fine. So you might just have, if someone sent you a few routes, they might put them in individual GPX files, or they might put them in a single GPX file. It doesn't actually matter, because when it comes to this screen, all of the, fi all of the routes in all of the files on the device will be listed. So we just select the one that we want to import, or or if we want to import more than one, we can we can select multiple, or we can select them all. That's fine. We'll just import one for a moment. 